They say that if it doesn't work the first time, ignore the fact that you might be doing it wrong and just try it again just to see if it works. And this is exactly the negotiating strategy that Liz Truss seems to be taking into her new negotiating sections with the EU over the Northern Ireland Protocol, which, if anything, is going to be... Um, extremely worrying because once again she's yet again throwing around the worrisome phrase of that she will invoke article 16 which will of course essentially start a trade war with the eu to which well we lose <laughs> instantly and everyone knows that even liz trusted remember um frosty spent the last 12 months well less than that basically threatening the same thing and not doing it. You can only threaten so much before the threat itself loses all meaning. And that's where we are with Article 16. It will never be triggered because anyone who in their out who is out of their mind enough to actually do it, the consequences would be so dire for the UK economically, it just wouldn't make sense to do it. However, there are people out there who are crazy enough to do that. And surprisingly, of course, it's not Liz Truss, of all people. It is, of course, the DUP. The DUP, again, who were very much on board for this deal, all but 12 months ago were on board for this deal, saying that, oh, yeah, this is going to be great. This is all going to be good. And then thrown under the bus, um, like Boris Johnson does with everyone. Um, you know, this is, this is, well, this was always going to be the problem. Um, you know, going back all the way back to 2016, this was very much always said it's going to be a problem, but the the leavers said Northern Ireland is not going to be a problem. It's going to be solved overnight with a cup of tea and a, and a biscuit, according to David Davis. And of course, here we are a year on and... <laughs> But unfortunately, now, of course, the DUP are now very much emboldened. Of course, there is a uh, local election for Northern Ireland coming up, I believe, May, I think it is. Um, and they are hoping to at least make some gains to they themselves to essentially just start pulling the protocol apart themselves on their side. However, there are various things, of course. Sinn Féin, of course, potentially could uh, get enough folks to become first minister. That itself is going to cause problems. So... Honestly, Northern Ireland is is going to be the hot spot to watch this year. So let's get on uh, with this and see how Liz Truss is about to do the exact same thing and achieve nothing in the same vein. So before we do get into that, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee Week. And well, Buy Me Coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So, on with this. So, this comes from The Independent with the title of The DUP Warn List Trust of Major Implications Unless Protocol Progress Has Been Made. The DUP have said there will be major implications at Stormont if the Foreign Secretary fails to swiftly set a formal deadline to end the negotiations with Brussels over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Days after the EU's chief negotiator, Margot Solvik, claimed that London has breached a great deal of trust, especially with Europe over the protocol. The DUP leader, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, has said that Liz Trust needed to provide a clear date for ending the talks. We need a clear date now. We need a clear timeline in which there is an expectation of real progress or the government takes the action that is necessary, Sir Geoffrey told the Sunday Telegraph. It is critical that Liz Truss pardon me, moves forward and very quickly and that we get real and meaningful progress on a range of issues, not at least which is removing the checks on the movement of goods within the United Kingdom's internal market. So Jeffrey would not specify what a reasonable deadline was for Ms. Truss to make the progress when asked by the Telegraph, but said that January is going to be an absolutely critical month. If we don't get any rapid decisions or rapid progress on one side or the other, it is kicking the can down the road. We will have major implications for the stability and the political institutions in Northern Ireland, Sir Geoffrey said. The European Commission's Vice President, Sir 
uh, Mr. Solvak said on Thursday, told the German news website Der Spiegel that the problems with the protocol and a way to maintain a free-flowing land border on the island of Ireland after Brexit meant that the UK broke international law in trying to get round the agreement. Mr. Fulvax said that to the Spiegel that he is pragmatic about Liz Truss taking on the responsibility for the post-Brexit negotiations with the EU, and after Brexit, the Minister Lord Frost resigned last month. But he warned that if mistrust was to trigger Article 16, a move that would be effectively uh, suspending a treaty agreed between the UK and the EU, it would throw into jeopardy the foundations of the entire trade deal reached between the two sides. And mistrust, she has said that she remains prepared to invoke Article 16 if issues are not resolved. So... I think we are in a, in a very... Um, dangerous situation around this time. If you ask me personally, I think things are going to go go from, especially this month, potentially from being cold to hot very, very quickly. Um, expect to see, especially Liz Truss, throw around big words like triggering Article 16, doing all this stuff. But actually following through on it? No. Liz Truss is in exactly the same way of triggering Article 16 that Lord Frost was. Imagine Article 16 being in a loaded gun in a box with a key on that's in a completely different building and Liz Truss doesn't even have the key to the box that the Article 16 gun is in. <laughs> Again, um, this would be so catastrophic if she decided to cast this because this would start a trade war with the EU. And starting a trade war with the EU ends very, very badly for Britain. Very badly. Um, it's something that we can just not fight. Uh, basically, uh, the EU are the bigger market. And in trade deals, as in trade wars, guess what? It's the bigger block that always wins. And no one is coming to our rescue. Because even the Americans have said, Joe Biden has said specifically, that if this protocol... Um, will damage the peace process, which it inevitably will, if this trust triggers Article 16, then America is prepared to put sanctions on the UK. And bear in mind, the only way, the only way to solve this at like the stroke of a pen, literally, you could do it in an afternoon, is if the UK said, we want to join the single market and the customs union, which it would be entirely entitled to do. It would be a very simple process um, the rest of the EU would be in favour of it. They wouldn't be against it because, again, we're not joining the EU politically. We're just joining the Single Market Customs Union. Uh, same agreement with Norway. Excellent crack on. Have at it. Guess what? Solves the Northern Ireland issue instantly. And before anyone says, oh, but that's not what we voted for. Wrong. Leave expressly, expressly said time and time again that we would not be leaving the single market and customs union. So any government, any government, whether it be this one or future conservative or labor governments, can unilaterally just say, we're going to join the single market and customs union. And if anyone says, oh, but you're destroying the will of the people, all they need to do is show the numerous clips of vote leave officials saying, we're not leaving the single market and customs union. And of course, infamously said by Daniel Hanan, only a fool talks about leaving the single market and customs union. So <laughs> that's where we are. Um, needless to say, um, negotiations, I think, are due to start next week, although it might be this week. I'm not 100% sure on that. So We'll see, but don't worry, we'll be bringing you the latest news on what happens in those negotiations when it happens. So look forward to that. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. And of course, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.